Good morning, Peter Gertz here. I'm a psychiatrist. And today I'm going to talk about something absolutely fascinating and uh, at least in a certain way mind-blowing. Quantum physics applied to psychiatry. I'll also talk about the foundations of mathematics, logic, also applied to psychiatry. Fascinating things. So quantum physics is based on the work of Heisenberg, Schrodinger, Schrodinger, Einstein. And one thing that has been found is that the observer actually changes so-called reality. So when you observe a wave in quantum physics, it turns into a particle. So um, that in itself is food for thought and really can affect our whole worldview that the observer changes so-called reality. Um, also in quantum physics, uh, it's been found that particles can influence each other at great distances, which is also interesting, fascinating thought. And so-called matter is to a very large extent actually empty space. So again, um, that principle is amazing to me. Um, that uh, quantum physics essentially has found that reality is dependent on the observer, which um, people um, involved in spiritual teachings <coughs> have been saying for eons, and that is um, that people create their own reality based on their beliefs and thoughts. So one could interpret the findings of quantum physics in a way that supports spirituality, meaning that people create their own reality, outside reality, through their internal beliefs and thoughts. Now, briefly about the foundation of mathematics, um, specifically regarding Kurt Gödel and Georg Cantor, um, two um, European mathematicians, Gödel, um, spent a lot of time in Vienna, Austria. Cantor was in Germany. And Gödel found that there is no axiomatic system in mathematics that is complete. Um, so it's impossible for uh, an axiomatic, axiomatic system in mathematics to be complete, meaning that at least there's at least one true statement that cannot be proved within that axiomatic system. So that also, if you um, consider that, can be mind-blowing because there's no complete foundational system, axiomatic system, in mathematics. So um, potentially, one could interpret this um, to mean that our conventional logic is not adequate to describe so-called reality. And um, Gödel actually um, was friendly with Einstein and studied some of his work. And Gödel felt that Einstein's work supported the notion that time travel was actually possible. So time is also not consistent. And Einstein had said that also. Um, so um, fascinating things. And here I am talking about um, our logic potentially not being adequate to describe so-called reality. Um, but I'm, of course, applying <laughs> the logic to say that and talk about it. So it seems in general that we as humans are quite limited in our perspective. And briefly about Georg Cantor, um, like I said, he was a mathematician. And one thing maybe just to describe what he worked with if you think of the numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, et cetera, there's an infinite, infinite number of numbers. And then if you take the um, even numbers, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, et cetera, there's also an infinite number of uh, even numbers. But of course, if you look at it and uh, are used to our conventional logic, there are uh, many more numbers total than even numbers, because you have the uneven numbers also. 
So basically that's what Cantor is working with. One infinity can be larger than another. So the infinity of total numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, does appear to be larger than the, inf than the infinity of even numbers, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, etc. So mind-blowing things that again kind of make us look at our conventional logic and wonder is our conventional logic really applicable to all aspects of so-called reality. All right, so altogether to summarize, um, conventional physics and conventional logic may be inadequate to describe our so-called reality. And it looks like, uh, and spiritual people have been talking about this again for eons, reality involves non-logical aspects like emotions, feelings, intuition, so -called, and so-called spiritual aspects. And these non-logical aspects um, may be best addressed um, in a treatment setting of psychiatric patients, for example, by an approach that includes non-logical non aspects itself. Um, so you may want to approach uh, the treatment of psychiatric patients, at least in part, with non-logical tools, non-logical -lo non approaches, um, so you want to use intuitive spiritual aspects, potentially at least, um, in the treatment of psychiatric patients. And that's happening more and more often. Very often now in psychiatry, mindfulness is used, meditation is used. And also psychiatrists and therapists can use their own intuition, of course, in the treatment of patients and have been doing so um, naturally for uh, many, many years. All right, thank you.